All right, I can see there are already six people online. Thank you guys for joining on time. I hope everyone is all right. Please let me know if you can hear me well. I hope everyone is all right. Please I have. If you can hear me well. I hope everyone. Is... I have my other phone here, so I can see any comments uh, and if anyone wants to send any messages. So let's just wait two minutes for the others to join, and then we will start. Mm. Hi Muhammad, I'm just we are just waiting two minutes for the others to join. All right, so we have 18 people online. Let's just give it one more minute. Hi Daniel. This will be a short video, so we will finish by 3:30 for everyone who wants to watch the match. I hope uh, everyone gets the best of luck. I'm cheering for Morocco, so I hope Morocco wins. It is challenging. But this is what's interesting about this match. I have my other phone here so I can see the messages. Hi, everyone. All right, so let's start. So thank you for joining on time, first of all. Uh, in the video today, so this is the third or fourth live video we do. And uh, before, uh, in the last video, we discussed how to choose an SEP module. This is based on your recommendations. So I always, I always ask for recommendations on which topic uh, to discuss on the lives on Saturdays and uh, most of your questions are always related to uh, the SAP career. Uh, this is why last video we discussed how to choose an SAP module and in the video today we will proceed for the next step. So after choosing a module, after choosing an SAP module, the next step is what will happen. So after we start our career, uh, what will be the next step? Let me see. So again, before we start, as I say in every single one of these live videos, this is a two way conversation, not a one way conversation. I do have some content to explain, but it is a limited content. The rest depends on your questions. So I have my phone here. I'm looking at your questions, your comments. If you have any questions or comments related to the SAP career, then please let me know. I will definitely consider them and answer them. Any questions not related to the topic, I will have to ignore because we have only 30 minutes to discuss this. So even if you have other questions, please keep them and now focus on asking things related to the SAP career. So uh, the video today, uh, we will talk about what will happen after you join the field as a general consultant. All right, so uh, I believe everyone can hear me. If you find any issues with the audio at any time, please send me a message. I can see them here. All right, so uh, last video we discussed how to choose an SAP module. Now, after you choose a module and let's say you found an SAP partner who accepts junior consultants, entry-level consultants. Whenever we start a career, people always think, what will be our, uh, the career development? Our, how, how, what will happen after? So now I'm a junior consultant, then I will be a senior, then maybe a solution architect or maybe a project manager. And we always look for uh, a path that we, just to try to determine what will happen to us. When you join the SAP field, this is not the right way to think. So SAP field is not a traditional one. Let me tell you what happens in the field. So I have been here for uh, more than 10 years. And from my own career and from what I saw from everyone around me, I can tell you uh, from experience how this field works. So first you join as a junior consultant. So you found a company that accepts junior SAP consultants. Normally you are getting paid a very low salary. You are just beginning. It's normal that you get paid a low salary. Okay. So let's say for example, and these are random numbers, not in any country. I'm just giving a number. Let's say a junior consultant is getting paid 500 USD. So you found a job today as a junior consultant, 500 USD. You don't have any experience, any practical experience yet in the SAP field. And then you started working on your first project. So when you joined, you can actually be called a system analyst or maybe a junior consultant or maybe an application associate. There are. I'm sorry about this interruption. I will put my phone on do not disturb up. And let's get back. So uh, please let me know if, you know if you cannot hear me. I'm not sure if something happened because of this call. I am back. 
Can uh, can someone comment if you can see me now or should I continue? Hello. Can you guys hear me well? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So sorry about this. Someone tried to call me and I, this is the first time this happens. So anyway, let's get back to the topic. So you join the field first and you, you are a junior consultant again. So uh, the important thing about the SAP field is we don't really, it is important which company you work for, of course, but it is not very, it's not really important. Uh, what is important in our field is the projects you do. And you can also see this when you look at any CV for an SAP consultant. We don't put the companies that, that we work for first, but we put our projects. So for example, today I found a job at uh, maybe IBM. IBM, they are a very big SAP cons uh, consultancy. But in my CV, I wouldn't put IBM first. I would put the projects that I did. And whenever you talk to someone, they don't start by asking which company you work for. This is important, but it's not. it doesn't really change anything. What they ask is, how many projects have you done? Which, what type of projects? Have you done implementations or rollouts? Have you done implementations worldwide or locally? Which language did you speak? Uh, did you do all the implementation or end to end or did you do parts in the middle of the implementation? Did you have a senior consultant with you or were you the lead consultant? These are the questions we are asked. So regardless of the company you work for, the SAP partner, the important thing is the projects you do. And nobody cares about the titles. So there's nothing called I was a junior consultant, I was a senior consultant, we don't care. The reality is in every project you have a different rule. So in, there are projects where you are a support consultant, meaning that there is a lead consultant and you are helping him. And there are other projects where you are uh, the lead consultant. So you are the one who is handling the project. And you, there are people who actually lead projects in their first year in the SAP market. It all depends on the projects available for the company you work for and the conditions of the market. So there is, there is really no rule to do this. And no one would ask, uh, what was your title? Was it a senior consultant, a junior consultant? The title doesn't really change anything. The project rule is what is important. So when you join, you join as a junior consultant, then you, maybe you expect that after a year, I will be promoted. Let me tell you that I have never been promoted in this, uh, in this field. Like I have never been promoted to a higher role. We always jump to different companies. Because at the end, you are looking for interesting projects. You are not looking for uh, being stable on a company and uh, getting um, getting promoted and going into a career path that's stable and so on. Most of what we do in the SAP field is we are in the information technology. We look for interesting projects. We travel a lot. We change companies a lot. And we change companies because of, uh, of what I will say, tell you now. So you started as a general consultant. You start as a junior consultant and you get paid $500 per month, for example. Once you do your first project, and this can be in six months, so a project can be six months. So let's say you joined, and then once you joined, they, ass they assigned you to a project, uh, and you have a senior with you, but you were assigned to the project from the beginning. So you attended, you attended all the meetings, you did all the project. After six months, you went live. You have one full life, one full life project experience. Once you put this in your CV, and you start looking in the market, just out of curiosity, you see what's available in the market, you will find other companies offering you 750. So like 50% higher what you, than what you are getting. And I'm not uh, giving like random numbers. This is real. You can actually start with a number and then you find that someone wants to pay you 150% more after your first project. And then you either say, okay, I will continue in my current company and I will ask them for a raise, right? So you'll go to your company, tell them, guys, I found opportunities outside. I want to get a raise. Most of them, they don't care. You are still a junior consultant. You joined us as a, as a junior. I cannot just raise your salary 150%. Uh, in, there is a hierarchy. There is an HR policy. We cannot do this. So normally what you do is you switch to another company. So you go to the other company. You only have one life experience. You do another project. Again, after you are done, you find that your rate in the market is higher. So our, our field is not... It's not time based. We cannot. We don't say that I have three years of experience. Yeah, we do say it, but everyone knows that this is not what is important. What's important is how many projects have you done. So maybe you are someone who has four years of experience, but you are getting paid more than someone who has been in the field for seven or eight years. So it all depends on how many projects you have done. Have you done the projects end to end or not? This is why when you join the field, don't don't. Don't worry about the titles. So will I be a junior consultant, a senior? I will be joined as a, a system analyst. Whatever the title is, it doesn't matter. What's important is 
uh, what is important is the uh, yeah we get rich all right what's important is the, the the rule that you will do in the project and the projects that you will do let me look in your comments because i can see some funny ones here all right so let's see the live chat okay All right, let's see. I'm functional logistic consultant. How to keep updated us for Hannah? I will talk about how to improve your knowledge. You switch to get higher salary. Yes, we do switch to get higher salary. That's what I said, uh, Rohal. Uh, where do you see basis consultants would stand in the current cloud world? Okay, this is uh, not. The, let's see about this. Salam. I'm currently working as any focus to proceed and not uh, lose myself. What tips and tricks to get the first project implementation project after get associate service education? Our field get rich share some information about SAP to b All right. So um, regarding the the basis consultants, this is not really related to the the. Uh, it is related, but actually I have no. I really have no experience about basis. It is a technical field, so I cannot give you any information. I don't want to give you wrong information. So I wouldn't say anything. I really don't know. You should approach someone who is a basis consultant because I really don't know if the what the base consultants do uh, when we are working with the cloud. So I cannot give you any information on this. Sorry. Uh, all right. Uh, tips and tricks to get the first project implementation after associate SAP certification. This is a good one. So uh, to get your first, let's agree on something. Um, the high, the most difficult thing in our field is to get in. So I'm telling you this after all the years of experience. People are struggling to get into the field. For the people inside, this is a good thing. So this actually should encourage you more to fight to get into the field because when, when, when there is a high entry barrier, when it is hard for others to join, it means that there are less people in the field and it means that there are good opportunities and higher pay. So this should encourage you. And yes, it is challenging. It is difficult to get your first project. Some people have it easy. Others struggle a lot to find their first project. How, what, how you should, what you should do to get the project. So from the summary of all the people I have seen who have projects, so you can either, I have been, seen people who actually got hired in their first SAP partner by sending a message on Facebook. So this can actually sound something strange to you, but in Egypt, we have the market is not really organized. We have many small business uh, SAP partners that are owned by individuals. And these individuals, they go to Facebook groups about SAP and they post and they help others and so on. So someone uh, approached one of them, sent him a message, told him, I want to work as a junior consultant. I have this experience as an accountant. And the guy just told him, come tomorrow, let's do an interview. And he hired him as a junior consultant and he started and now he has like six years of experience. Things moved on. I have seen people also who get hired because of their relations. Someone who he met in a course, someone he met in at the gym. So your connections, you can always find a connection that can help you find a project. And sometimes it's more difficult than this. Uh, of course, you should apply to jobs, but whenever you apply, don't get frustrated. You'll find that any job is asking for an experienced, consul uh, experienced consultant, not a junior one. Uh, so this is why it's difficult to find a project, but keep looking. Try the social the social media uh, platforms. So face if you have a, if you find an SCEP group on Facebook, if you find an SCEP group on LinkedIn, you can post there saying that I'm looking for a, my first project and I'm I'm willing to uh, to switch career to start working as an SCEP consultant. Try contacting people on LinkedIn. Try contacting the company owners. So if you are in a country and you know that this person is an owner of an SEP partner or in the, in the board of directors, try to contact him and just keep trying until you find your first project. This is the most difficult thing. Once you get into the field, trust me, things will go, whether you are a good consultant in the beginning or a bad consultant or whether you are struggling, everyone improves and it will go on. And once you get in, there is a high demand on SAP consultants. So everyone is able to find a project. So don't don't give up. Keep trying to find your own, your first project. All right. I'm trained on SAP ECC. Try Accenture Deloitte ECC. Okay, Rohal, try Accenture Deloitte from someone. I mean, from someone who is coming from Egypt. Joining Accenture is extremely difficult there. I mean, I don't know anyone who joined Accenture in Egypt anyway. The point is, it depends on the market, yes. There are, uh, I have seen in France, for example, Accenture 
they give programs to graduates and they accept people who want to change their career and they accept people who have no experience and they want to learn. So they actually give training programs for people who are interested to work as a consultant, which is so they are making things very easy for the people in the market. But in Egypt, for example, it is extremely difficult to get in. Uh, there are, it depends on the market, I'm sure. So uh, joining Deloitte and Accenture is not easy at all, as you think, in, in some countries. Maybe in others, it's easy. So anyway, so uh, what I was saying is, so after you join, I need to continue to the other questions. So this is the for the first one. What What is the career path? Will I be a junior, then a senior, then there is no title. Don't worry about the titles. From, what we, from the way we look into it is, uh, in our career, you are either someone who is working in a vendor side, vendor side. So you are working for an SCEP partner doing projects for many other customers, or you are working in a customer side. So you are someone who is working in a company and working on SCEP in this company. So you are not doing projects uh, outside. And when you are working in a vendor side, you will be allocated to multiple projects. So you'll get a lot of experience. You will have exposure. You will try different industries, different companies different cultures it will give you a very good opportunity to grow and to build your connections to try international projects and local projects for me if i was not in a sub so when i started i was in a vendor side and I, there i got to work on local companies and international ones and this is what helped me build my network and build my experience it was very important so we always recommend that to become an SAP consultant, you start with an SAP vendor. Don't go to the customer side. So don't start with SAP in a company and stay on it. And even if you start in a customer side, so if you start in a company and you work on SAP in this company, don't stay there for long. After you learn, you get a title. So you have some experience about configuration, jump to an SAP partner. An SAP consultant, you definitely need the experience of full time for uh, full life cycle projects with an SAP vendor. This is very important if you want to grow as an SAP consultant. Otherwise, you will not be considered really as an SAP consultant. Even in the market, people will always look to you as someone who is only working on customer side. It will be hard to to become a real consultant. So you need you always need to try to join an SAP vendor. After you build some experiences, you do some projects, then if you find a good opportunity in a customer side to settle down, you can go to a customer side. For me, for example, I was on a vendor side, then I did freelancing. So freelancing and vendor side are similar because in both cases, we jump projects, we change projects based on uh, what we find. And then to move to France, I needed the work permit and the visa and so on. And this was not um, this. I didn't have the option to do this as someone who is uh, working as a freelancer or so on. So I joined a company to find a contract and currently I'm on a customer side. What will happen in the future? I'm not sure. But when you start your career, you always need to start in a vendor side. Or if you start in a customer side, you need to switch. So this is the, the, uh, the, the first part in our career. So don't worry about junior, senior and so on. Just try to do projects as you can. The second question I got is, yes, what is a solution architect? So we always see the title social architect as something uh, big that experienced consultants only get. Let me tell you that there are companies that hire SAP consultants and call them social architects from the beginning. So titles don't really mean anything in our field, okay? Uh, unless you work for an international company, ideally what a social architect is, is someone who will work before the consultants. So uh, imagine, imagine that you are working for a company they have a problem that they have multiple supplier invoices coming. They have thousands of invoices they receive every day. And the accounting department is looking for an IT solution to solve this. So who will who will say what are the solutions available? Who will design a process to, to do this before we actually start going into the tools? So if we can actually, if we have this problem, we can say that we will handle it with another software than SAP. Maybe we'll, we'll buy a third party software. Maybe we will do anything. So this is a solution architecture. So the solution architect is someone who takes the, the problem that we have in the business side and then starts exploring the information technology solutions available to handle this issue. Not related to SAP, not related to any solution. We are trying to architect the solution that will hold that will solve this problem and then this person 
uh, along with the team, they decide what they want to do. And then, for example, if they say we are going to apply this area in SAP, then they will pass the work to SAP consultants. Or if they say we are going to buy this external software, then they will contact this company to uh, to come and do presentations and then uh, do the implementation. So the solution architect is someone who designs the solution across systems, across tools, before we start implementing in a certain tool. This is why normally, if we are talking about a real solution architect, he should be someone who has IT experience, project management experience, uh, who so someone who can lead a process and actually uh, analyze the different options and evaluate them. So this is a solution architect. This is why normally it is a senior position. What else? So the another question I got is, from the last time before I look into your comments, is can I continue as a consultant for the rest of my life or do I have to switch to something else? So the simple answer is you can definitely continue as a consultant. There are too many people who have been working for consultants for 20 years or more. You can, so yes, you can continue as a consultant. There is no need to switch to line management. You can continue as a technical expert, subject matter expert, someone who would be very, very needed in every project that is appreciated a lot in the company and in different projects without having to manage anyone. I'm not saying this is a good thing. It is all it all depends on your preference. So there are people who don't want to be managers, who don't want to have subordinates and to do uh, like timesheets, evaluations, promotions and so on. And there are people who want to explore this. So if you are someone who don't want to be a line manager, this can be done. Yes, you can continue as a consultant in this career. I don't see any reason that you need to become a line manager. On the other hand, exploring line management is an important thing. It will help you grow if you learn how to manage others. And also at certain point in your career, you will find a lot of opportunities in the market looking for managers. And if you have no management experience, uh, experience you will feel bad because you are losing opportunities especially if you are someone who has a lot of experience in the field. So after 10 years, for example, most of the opportunities I see looking for people with my experience are looking for people who will manage teams. And if you don't have the management, the people management experience yet, then it would be a bad thing in your CV that you don't know how to manage others and you will not be able to apply for these opportunities. So you, it is good to have some kind of balance. So try to uh, do some projects as a people manager or try this option but if you don't want to be a, a line manager or a people manager you can definitely continue as uh, as a technical consultant always the other thing is i see many people in the field switch to uh, think or they assume that uh, it is a normal development for a consultant to become a project manager this is completely wrong okay so a consultant does not have to be a project manager and being a consultant does not allow you to become a project manager and becoming a project manager is not uh, is not an upgrade or, or a promotion a project manager is a different rule so a consultant is something a project manager is a different thing there are people who start working as consultants and in every project so what happens is in every project we work with project managers and people see, look at them as one project manager in a full team of consultants so we think that it is uh, like something prestigious and big what i need to tell you is it is not it's not a hierarchy so the project manager is not something who is more advanced than you it is just a different rule and they require different kind of education and they require different kind of certificates so if you think that as a consultant I will uh, advance to become a project manager, then you need to start learning how to become a project manager. Don't just say that I'm a good consultant, then I will be promoted to a project manager. This is completely wrong. You will ruin the projects. You will torture everyone who is with you in the project. You will have very bad customer experience. Don't do this. If you want to become a project manager as a consultant, or even if you are not a consultant, then you need to study project management, okay? And I have been working with me in many projects. I have been working with many project managers. The project manager does not need SAP experience. If he has SAP experience, well, fine. It can be an advantage or a disadvantage, but it's not needed. A project manager is a project manager. He is not an SAP consultant. So don't expect that because you are a consultant, you have the right to be promoted to a project manager. If you want to be a project manager, you don't need to be a consultant. You can start this just to go and study the project management certificates, PMP, the, take the project management path. It is a different career than the SAP consultants. Okay, so even if you decide as a consultant to become a project manager, you need to switch. You need to start studying project management.
please do this because if you don't and you expect that you will be good as a project manager because you are a good consultant you will give everyone a very hard time so don't do this uh, so this is regarding also the project management part now i'm done with the questions let me check the comments and see what we have all right and let's see good place i am an end user i could place an sap consultant with available knowledge i'm into uh, functional manual testing in fico with what path i need to choose the future i'm into fico so Bavithra, this is a very good thing so you are end user you could placed as an sap consultant uh okay so uh, i see this is a, if you i mean if you if you have access to a system and you have access to the training materials you are definitely on the right path so continue learning uh, adjust your cv this is an important part this is a very important part guys you need to work on your linkedin profile and your cv to adjust them to align them with your scep career so if you even if you are an end user or if you are someone who is still running scep then in your CV, in your LinkedIn profile, you need to mention any certificates you got, any uh, any projects in any job. So even in your current position, for example, you are an accountant. So in your responsibilities, you need to highlight that uh, a key user or an end user on SCEP in this areas who implemented these projects in SCEP. Put, put this in your job description in the things that you did, and it will improve your opportunity a lot to find your first project. So if you are someone who wants to work as an SAP consultant or who is already an SAP consultant, pay attention to your CV. You need to highlight your projects, your SAP experiences and what you are looking for. So uh, if you are an accountant and you want to work as an uh, SAP consultant, then highlight everything related to SAP in your CV. And to mention that I'm looking to move to uh, I'm looking to learn more on SAP. OK, so. Um, uh, regarding so Bavithra, you are on a, a very good path. Continue, and if you have any questions, let me know. You can approach me on LinkedIn. I'm trained SAP ACC. Should I go as for S4 HANA training? Yes, yes, yes. If you are working in S in ACC, you need to learn S4 HANA. It is already too late. There are no big changes between ACC and S4 HANA. So you, if you have experience in ACC, you can definitely learn S4 HANA very easily. But you need to upgrade your knowledge. So you need to learn S4 HANA. Okay. I am current, uh, let's see, try Accenture, Deloitte. I, is there any certification for FM fund management? I'm not sure, Ahmed, you can contact me on LinkedIn. We can look together. I'm not sure if there is a certification, especially for fund management. I can check with my connections. I am currently a plant management consultant in order to improve what module should I target, PS or PP? Uh, Ahmed, Ahmed, Ala. so Ahmed, um, it depends on the positions you can see around you. As a PS consultant, you will work maybe more in real estate projects. I definitely, I prefer production planning, to be honest. So I always prefer production planning. I find it is a very interesting module. I see there are many opportunities for it. I don't, I have not seen many pure project system consultants. So I wouldn't say, um, so normally I would say PP, but of course, if you have opportunities around you that go into PS, and if you enjoy working on PS, then definitely go for it. It's a very interesting module. And then from PS, you will extend maybe to something like real estate. So REFX, it would be a good path also. Uh, you mentioned that knowing English is necessary. How did you learn English? How did you acquire your technical vocabulary? Okay, so Daniel, uh, how I learned English is uh, initially, so um, my school did not teach me anything. So I learned it by going into online chat rooms in the year two, around 2009, 2010. I was in, in university and I used to chat a lot online. So I started going into online chat rooms and improving and just chatting with others until I improved my vocabulary, but I was not able to, able to speak. Then I took some uh, conversation courses. It was pure conversation course, not, not like uh, normal English, just pure conversation. I did some conversation courses. And then uh, I did around, I think, two or three months, not a lot. So once you have the, voca the vocabulary, you only need to adjust your, uh, your conversation skills. And then I found uh, my first job as a customer service uh, on the phone. So uh, customer service agent on the phone for US accounts. And once I did, after I did this job, I stayed in it for seven months. When I started, my English was, medium, was okay. I was able to discuss on the phone with others but I was really, uh, I wasn't really confident. After seven months, 
it is i mean seven months of answering phone every day for nine hours uh, to us customers and this changed a lot so just improve your vocabulary then work on your conversation skills uh, how did i acquire my technical knowledge is because i learned SAP from the SAP pdf materials that are available to everyone and available in SAP learning hub and all these materials are in english so i i had to develop my english book my uh, my technical vocabulary also we are running out of time but let me check the rest of the questions uh, all right i'm let's see I am Junior Faiko and I'm looking for ways to better understand business process, any tips, accounting material, recommendation. If you are someone who is working on Faiko, you definitely need to check the CMA, Certified Managerial Accounting materials. Even if you're not going to take the certificate, go online, look for GLIM CMA. So CMA is a very known certificate for managerial accountants. And then there are many available materials online. Any version would do. Just go look for, it is called Glime, and there was also another uh, author who used to do the book for CMA. Many versions are available online for free. You need to study them. They will help you a lot. I mean, everything you see on the channel when I started uh, doing the videos and I started talking business process from business process point of view, this all started when I did my first uh, CMA certification. So study the CMA. It will help you a lot understand why and how of uh, accounting and how things happen in CEP and everything. So study CMA as a FICO consultant. Uh, hi, CEP is SAP pr production planning COSD combination, a good combination. You can never be a PP COSD. Come on. I mean, um, be realistic. Okay. I mean, you cannot focus on multiple things. You cannot be, I mean, production planning is a huge module. I, I, until now, whenever I see someone who's working as a production planning consultant, I wish him good luck. I mean, it is very heavy. It's very hard. It's very complicated. There are too many options. Whenever you work in a company, there are different processes. Production is a very interesting topic. So if you are someone who is in production planning, focus on production planning. SD sales has nothing to do with it. So don't go into SD, just focus on production planning. And if you want to, if you are a guru and you are very good in production planning and you just want to extend your knowledge outside, then learning uh, controlling would definitely help because there is a very, very uh, strong integration between production planning and controlling modules. So if you want to learn something, learn controlling, but please focus on one thing. So if you are a production planning consultant, focus on production planning, okay? How you expect the demand for SAP APPM? I'm not sure, Mohammed. It's not my area, and I really don't uh, don't know. I recommend you contact someone in this area. Uh, SAP Function Consultant, uh, SAP Signaview. What is important to SAP Signaview? SAP Signaview is a business process documentation uh, system, and I'm still exploring it. I will try to do some videos to summarize this once I I I can actually understand everything about it. Uh, do we have multiple media experience to become a team lead? No, 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 no. Rajiv, do we have to have multiple module experience to become a team lead? Not at all. Not at all. Uh, so remember, so remember that a team lead is a people manager. You are supposed to manage the people around you. So it really doesn't matter if your technical experience is good or not. People need to understand the difference between being a consultant, being a team leader and being a project manager. If you are someone who is a project manager and you want to have technical experience, or if you are a team leader and you want to have huge technical experience, this is wrong. You will actually torture the people who are with you. A team leader is supposed to manage the team, manage deadlines, manage the evaluation of the team members and so on. You are not supposed to micromanage and to go into the technical activities they do. So a team leader, you don't need technical experience and you don't definitely don't need to understand different modules. You need to understand what SAP is about, uh, how the projects work, manage the customer require uh, the customer needs manage the team that is with you understand the consultants who is actually hard worker who is avoiding to work and all of this stuff focus on this more than the technical part what's the difference between a team lead and a project manager okay so a team lead and a project manager a team lead so let's say you are in uh, a project the project has a project manager who is handling all the different streams so the project manager's job is to work with the customer he understands what is the deadline. He manages the customer communication. 
uh, he tries he manages the team so everyone we get into the we finish the project according to the timeline and according to the budget it is a very uh, big role to describe in two minutes because we are out of time so this is the project manager the team leader is working in a certain area so for example we as financial consultants we have a team leader and the team leader is not assigned to the project the team leader is uh, is the manager of all the financial consultants that are assigned to the different projects so you have for example sales and distribution consultants material management consultants finance consultants and for every team there is a team lead and this team lead is responsible for the allocation of his team so this guy will go to this project this guy will go to this project and evaluation and um, and different things related to people management this is the team leader all right and tester future path uh what is your advice for people starting their career as sap architect there is nothing called an sap certification for uh, so what is your advice for people who want to be a solution architect there is no certification for something called solution architect. Again, a solution architect is someone who will understand the business problem and design a solution across different tools and systems to solve it. Uh, so it, it, it needs general knowledge of IT, good management skills, good communication skills. There, I, don't, I don't know if there is, in SAP, there is nothing called a certificate for a solution architect. Uh, I'm not sure if there's something that will qualify you more outside. What is your rate per hour? Okay, uh, SAP manager at bigger companies. For any training requirements, guys, you can contact me on LinkedIn. We, I, I cannot discuss this online. So if you have any training requirements for your company, just contact me on LinkedIn and we can discuss. Uh, SAP manager at bigger companies also doing sales, for example. Thanks a lot for your previous advice. You're welcome. All right, we are way, uh, so we are way beyond the, the timeline. Uh, it was a very interesting session for me, guys. Thanks a lot for your questions and comments. This is really interesting. And uh, remember that this video is saved on YouTube. It will always be there. You can leave your comments if, even after I finish the, the live stream now. You can go and leave your comments on the video and I will respond to them also as much as I can. So it's not over and the video will always be there. You can always watch it anytime you want. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again on next Saturday in another live session. I'm not sure yet about the topic, so I will create another poll. Uh, so people can recommend the topics that they are interested in for the next live session next Saturday. Thank you and uh, good luck for the match between Portugal and Morocco. It will be an interesting match. Have a nice day. Bye.